。はい、ようこそ、皆さん。ようこそ。この紅生姜へ。This is gonna be bad here. Hello there, everyone. I'm Benny. This is the For Humanity channel. Today, I'd like to talk about something that has been one of the most intriguing parts of Japanese culture for me for the past months, at least. Let's start talking. So, as you may have noticed, I'm a huge fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Well, quite obviously. And thanks to that,、uh, while living in Japan, I kind of may have. Paid too much attention to minor stuff happening here and there that are connected to the franchise. Nah, it won't work like this. I can't script. <laughs> I'll just talk about it. As you might know, I lived in Osaka、uh, from August the 25th of 2018, and I moved back home to Hungary、uh, last June, so 2019 June. And、uh, based on the fact that I'm a JoJo's fan and the fact that I lived in Osaka, you might have put the picture together. There was an exhibition. There was a JoJo's exhibition in Osaka. All I'm saying about that is that I'm a freaking cheap bastard. It was a measly 3,000 ish yen, I think. It wasn't too much more. And、uh, at that time, well, I, was, I was quite interested in going there, but. I ended up deciding against it for some reason. And probably the reason was that I. It's nothing important, right? It's just like small details, like, like the fact that I wanted to eat. That said, I actually had enough money to do that, now that I think about it. But for some reason, I just decided not to do it. I don't understand why. I'm just a stupid idiot.、Uh, my friends invited me to go with them, like, Multiple times, and in the end, we didn't. I, I don't know, I can't remember if they did, but for sure, I didn't go. And that was because of the fact that I didn't want to spend too much money on it. Now, now another fact about me that you have to know in order to understand this video is the fact that, like, literally on my first day in Japan, I remember this really clearly because I left the airport around 10 a.m. Uh, with a shuttle bus sent from our university that we attended. And after the, the bus arrived、uh, to, the, to the dorm,、um, the first thing I did, obviously, was to find a place where I could smoke. And I asked around, kind of, and people pointed me towards a, a small shop, a small store, per se. Let, let's, let's say that. And、uh, they said it's like. If I go out of dorm and just 500 meters away, it's not too far away. Well, at that point, I was kind of pissed. Like, 500 meters, I'd have to walk every single day for the nearest smoking spot. I didn't like that. But I couldn't do anything because in Japan, you can't really smoke and walk on the street because people will do that deadly stare that is just. Like, no matter how strong of a personality you are, you'll feel bad. It's just horrible. It's like. It's like this. I, I, I don't even want to look at my enemies like that because that's just horrible. Like, looking at people like that is just. You're gonna make them feel horrible about themselves. Can't do anything about that, so I went over to this small store.、Uh, I walked up there and I was quite happy to see that the name was in English because I could read it. At least I could tell other people where to go if they wanted to. And the name of that place is Lawson. Just a different world for me. It was in, in Hungary, we have, we have a couple of convenience stores. We have Tesco, obviously, like every, every single country in Europe has a Tesco at least. But other than that, and excuse me for a moment, I, I don't know how to pronounce these in English, so I'm gonna pronounce them in Hungarian just for sure.、Uh, so we have places like Spar, we have CBA, we have, we have Coop. They're like Right places. <laughs> It's like you go in, you can buy your bread, you can buy a drink, you can buy an energy drink, you can buy alcohol, you can buy foods, you can like buy a lot of things. 
right? Right? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought until I moved to Japan. Because upon arriving to Lawson, like, the first thing wasn't for me to just stand there and smoke. The first thing was to go inside the shop and just check it out for myself. So, I, I, I walked inside, like, in a, a really awkward way. I was like... Konnichiwa. And then I just turned left. Walked around all the lines and... I was dumbfounded. I was like... Yeah, we have convenience stores in Hungary. They're cool. But the Japanese ones are so much better! Like, walk there for five seconds. You walk past an ice machine, you walk past ice cream, you walk past chargers, you walk past uh, shaving equipment, underwear, fucking underwear. You can buy underwear in every single convenience store in Japan and that's like the weirdest thing. And it's like a tad bit weirder because it's like next to the porn mags. Just, uh, just after a couple of days that I spent there, I just realized how much better it was. Like, as a lot of other people said here on YouTube as well, convenience stores are existent throughout the world, but the word convenience in them just, it, it just extremely better in Japan. It just, it has a meaning to it. Convenience has a meaning to it in Japan. And other countries, it's just like the convenience of buying overpriced things. In Japan it's cheap. You can buy a water, for, you, you can buy a bottle of water from a dollar. Less than a dollar. And that's just good. And that's just, that just really good compared to other countries like Hungary where uh, it's, it's way more expensive than that sometimes. Depends on the water obviously. But in Japan it's just so much better. And another thing that caught my eyes like straight up was all, all the advertisements around the shop, and the advertisements, ad, 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 yeah, the advertisements were just like so much different because they were like for like bands, anime, manga, TV shows. Here it's like I don't know, I don't see them. I don't know how they work. I don't know how a Seven Eleven works in America. I've never been to America, so it might be something similar, but in Japan, all convenience stores have so much collaborations going on with with bands, with anime, with manga, with with TV shows, with whatever. Do any of you guys play Dragon Quest? We're gonna go into this konbini just so we can hear the Dragon Quest sound effects. <laughs> Is this an Akihabara exclusive? I've never seen this anywhere else. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it, really. Yeah, it They've was. Got some Dragon Quest pictures on the wall, but uh, the sound effects are the most. Sound effects. They also, they should have like some Dragon Quest products. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, um, yes, they do. There we go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I bought that glass. This is the least oh, functional glass I've ever purchased. It's adorable. Yeah. Also, yeah, look at the, the arrows on the ground. Ah, oh, cool. Oh, I'm just playing very hard. So they have these to the extent of having like specific merch for them, specific merchandise that they sell in a collaboration with the show with with any of the with any of these uh, topics. And I have an example here, ju just so that you see. It. Um, now, uh, Kantai Collection fans, I'll have to apologize because I don't watch Kantai Collection. I just bought this because it, I, I literally had to just buy like three monsters and I love monster and this is also Lawson so I love Lawson and uh, I don't know who this is I screwed up <laughs> so I don't know who this is but 
uh, for sure, it's just like, I just decided that I want this. Not because I know the show, but because it's a Lawson waifu. <laughs> Holy shit, no. Not because of that. Well, partly because of that. But also because it's like such a cool idea that these shops have things like have collaborations going on with uh, like popular shows and that was like so new to me like the most collaboration I've seen before uh, was when Finding Nemo came out yeah that was a long time ago but I don't really go to stores all that much so I don't know about new things but that was the last time I can remember when a stamp book came out in in, in Spar, uh based around uh, Finding Nemo. So every time you would buy something, you would get a sticker and you would put it into the album. And it was cool. I liked it. I didn't do it, but I liked the idea. And even before that, we had similar things like that. Now, you might ask, why did I start this video by proclaiming that I like Jojo? That's that's a pretty easy topic. Uh, why didn't I go in the end to this uh, uh, to this exhibition? Why am I talking about Lawson? Well, that's pretty easy if you watched part four of JoJo, because in the small town of Morio, that was the weirdest pronunciation, but it Morio. <laughs> it's a me Morio. <laughs> uh, so in the small town of Morio, in part four. Uh, there was a convenience store. This one. Is it, is it gonna fit? I hope it's gonna fit. I'm not gonna edit this part. Ha. It's called Awesome. That, that's already kind of like a, a flag, I guess. Like saying that it's awesome. We know another convenience store called that, but also the design is the same. It's, it's blue and white. It's uh, white base, blue stripes. It's, uh, it's a Lawson in Jojo. And that's Super cool, I really like the idea of that once I realized that it was Lawson. It took me quite a bit, but I mean to realize it, obviously. After a while, I, I heard about the city of Sendai. Now, you might know where this is going, because a lot of people, I think, talked about this already, like a little bit on YouTube, or you might have heard about it. Araki Hirohiko, uh, the author of Jojo, is from Sendai, and... I heard that there's a specific Lawson that was made for, I think, the 50th or... Yeah, I think the 50th anniversary for Jojo. I'm definitely miscounting something. The 30th anniversary for Jojo. Yes, that's it. And, uh... So it was built a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, rebuilt a couple of years ago in Sendai. And... It's an actual Lawson. Not a Lawson, it's an Lawson from Jojo, actually built in Japan. And when I heard that, it was like kind of like a, a mind blown thing because it's like two of my favorite things in one. It's Jojo and Lawson. And I just wanted to go there. So what did I do? Same thing as with the exhibition. I didn't go because I'm a stupid idiot. right I'm an idiot because I thought that it's super pricey to go to Sendai because at that time um, the idea of traveling by plane in the same country was kind of absurd to me because you know Hungary you can literally just hop into a car and be on the be in the other side of the country in like five hours six maybe and uh, there was no point for me to understand that before and uh, I think I realized that when I went to Okinawa in Japan that that's actually a possibility but at that point I still thought that yeah Okinawa it's in the middle of the sea so obviously you would either take a boat there or a plane and a boat would take probably half a day so I took a two-hour plane and that was that was decent but when it comes to the mainland of Japan I, I didn't really think about flying by plane because it just sounds weird. So I checked the prices for the Shinkansen, uh, which is the bullet train. Uh, to anyone who doesn't know, it's like the fastest train in Japan. And uh, 
I was absolutely horrified. It was over 10,000 yen or a hundred bucks. That's just too much. Why, why would you try to do that? Why would you pay for that? Unless you had a lot of money. So I ended up deciding against going to Sendai. And just a week after I got back to Hungary, I was like... I think I was, was watching uh, Chris Broad's uh, video on traveling to Osaka. And, and I can't remember which video it was actually, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna link his channel in the description because no one knows him, obviously. He's like a small time YouTuber, not like me. <sighs> he lives in Sendai. That's how I heard about the town. And in that video, he mentioned that it's just 5,000 yen by plane, 50 bucks by plane. You have to pay 50 bucks to fly to another city in Japan and, <laughs> and I couldn't even believe it. One, I couldn't believe that a plane ticket would be that cheap and two, I couldn't believe that I didn't take up on the opportunity. So yeah, well that's kind of how it goes. I miss that as well because I miss everything but, but I didn't come home empty-handed because of two reasons. One of them is here, because obviously I would buy a Joseph... That's how professionals do it, right? I don't think it's in focus. Well, anyways, uh, believe me that this is a Joseph Josa figurine that I absolutely love. And the other thing is, uh, give me a second and I'll bring it here. I totally forgot about it. So the other thing is that I brought home from Japan is... Uh, these four books, if you're not familiar with them, then you kind of don't know Jojo, because this is the Jojonium. <laughs> I have four volumes from it, thanks uh, to one of my friends who gave it to me, because, uh, because at the time I thought they were really expensive, and now that I'm reading the price, it was just... One of these is a dollar. This is like impossible to get here in the West. You can buy this used for a dollar. And believe me, they're in mint condition. Like, beautiful Dio Brando right there. That's all I'm saying, that in Japan you should buy used books because, because they are just so much cheaper. Well, anyways, that's kind of off topic now. Another thing that I really wanted to talk about in general is that this is not a unique situation. This awesome is not just a one-time thing. In Japan there's many, many convenience stores that have a collaboration, like a, a, a full-time collaboration with others. In uh, Akihabara in Tokyo, uh, there's a Dragon Quest shop, for example. I, I'm not really into Dragon Quest. But that's still awesome to think about. I heard about another one that has a One Piece thing to it. I don't know where it is, I'm sorry. I couldn't find it exactly. But I tried to look into it. It's really hard to find uh, convenience stores online in English. It's kind of hard uh, to find these collaboration convenience stores in Japan, in English, because frankly they don't speak about it too much on the West, only people who live in Japan speak about it. And even on YouTube, it's like, it's not even covered that much. The only videos that I know about talk a little bit about it is, uh, so uh, for one of these uh, videos, uh, that I actually found on it was actually one of the videos that gave me the idea to actually cover this topic more because it's it's close to my heart I love convenience stores and when I heard about Olsen I felt amazing so I wanted to tell people how there's a Dragon Quest one as well how there's a bunch of more and when I uh, when I moved to Japan I plan to go to these shops and actually look around in them and then cover them and um, yeah, so one of the videos that I featured in this uh, was uh, from Sharla, uh, from the channel Charmeleon. 
uh, I definitely recommend watching that video, it's down in the description. Uh, she actually gave uh, permission to me to use it, um, I was super happy, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna fanboy a little bit because it was like... One, one of those moments, you know, when you watch a YouTuber and they reply to your comment, it's that, that sort of feeling. Yeah, that, that was super cool, I really liked it. And uh... Yeah, the other one uh, is... This one? I can't remember the name. So another one that I found is actually in Osaka, which I didn't know about. Uh, it's uh, uploading uh, on a channel called uh, Kyabetsutaro Motorcycle. I hope that says anything to you guys. I never heard about it. I looked it up and it's just some uh, motorcycling websites, YouTube page or something. And uh, there's another Dragon Quest. Uh, uh, actually, that's uh, a Dragon Quest Lawson. Uh, down in Namba in Osaka and that's actually kind of interesting because I've been to Namba countless times and I never found this before So it might have been like a limited time thing, but if it's still there go ahead and check it out I'll link the video in the description and The next video that I found uh, was actually uh, so the other video that I found on it is uh, about a Family Mart One Piece collaboration. Uh, it was uh, uploaded by a channel called uh, Coco Jam Official. I'll include that in the description as well. If you want to check it out, it's a two minute video. The previous one as well is a really short video. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a minute, it's, uh, just over a minute, a uh, minute and five seconds. Uh, go ahead and check them out. They're really just uh, featuring these uh, places. What I'd like to do with these is that I'd actually like to go in depth over time. Uh, I'll talk about convenience stores in general uh, in I think one of the next videos. I don't know when I, that will come out. I guess that's it uh, for this video. If you have any stories like this in Japan or if you know about a specific convenience store that does this, please leave that in the Leave the description, okay? So if you have any stories like this or uh, a convenience store, uh, a collaboration convenience store that you know of, please leave them in the description. I will read all comments, I will reply to all comments, and uh, yeah, so I'll, if you want me to cover a topic, please also leave a comment about it in the description. And if you don't have anything like that, then just tell me how you feel, because I'm interested and I will reply. So thank you very much for watching this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, also hit the bell icon, goodbye.